thank you very much again for the invitation and thank you very much for uh, joining my talk. I hope you like it. it uh, my name is Fred Nekchuk and uh, I, I'm working at UCD, University College Dublin in Ireland. And today I'm going to talk about factorization of algebraic piadic rankin selberg L functions. So uh, this is my outline. Um, and first of all, um, yes. So first in the first part of the talk, I will give some preliminaries and then I will move to the main problem. Uh, and I will explain what happens case by case. So um, first of all, let me start with the periodic numbers and uh, for introduction. So we all know that uh, our, the real numbers are constructed by completing uh, the rational numbers with respect to the usual Euclidean uh, absolute value. And so there are other absolute values as well. Uh, and periodic numbers, are constructed by completing a Q with respect to the periodic absolute value, which is defined as this, as follows, as you see here. And so this periodic valuation, it is called periodic valuation. This VPX is called periodic valuation of X and it is unique, we determined by this property. Um, and um, and uh, if we complete Q with respect to uh, this absolute value, we get periodic numbers. And we can look at the um, periodic integers, which is uh, the closed unit ball uh, uh, inside, uh, which mean, which I mean that uh, the absolute value is less than or equal to one. If we look at this set, uh, we get the periodic integers and it's denoted as ZP. Uh, so this uh, absolute value is a non-Archimedean absolute value. Uh, so it doesn't satisfy the Archimedean property. And therefore, periodic numbers can have some strange topological properties. And for example, uh, first of all, uh, this, for example, um, every uh, every um, isosceles uh, triangle is, uh, yeah, every triangle is isosceles, for example, uh, to give one example. And this is uh, this is a Sierpinski triangle. And uh, as you, this is uh, also a um, like visual representation of set three. You can think of this thing like here as zero modulo trees, uh, one modulo three and two modulo three and zero modulo nine and etc. And so let me move on. But we can also construct ZP algebraically. Uh, it consists of sequences like this, uh, which are uh, where each element is in Z mod P to the N, and they are uh, compatible with respect to the modulo P to the N. So uh, mod P to the N reduction, they are compatible. So the technical term for this is that ZP is the inverse limit of Z mod P to the NZ. And this is a discrete valuation ring. So it's a PID and it has a unique non-zero uh, prime ideal. And its field of fractions is QP. And we will also consider uh, finite expansions of QP uh, and their ring of integers, which takes the roles of ZP, uh, which enjoy similar properties. And uh, also let ZP be the periodic completion of the algebraic closure uh, of QP. So this is the analog of complex numbers in the periodic world. Mm. And let me move on to Galois representations. So we are interested in periodic Galois representations. So a periodic Galois representation of the Galois group uh, of a number field K with coefficients in a finite extension of QP is a finite dimensional vector space over E and it is equipped with a continuous section of uh, the Galois group, which I mean is that this group homomorphism is continuous and these, are the, uh, these maps are here are also continuous. Um, so, for example, we can take a V as e to the m with the trivial action of GK, and so it's an n-dimensional trivial representation. And also, if we have two representations, their direct sum, tensor product, and uh, the homomorphisms from V1 to V2, they are also representations. Um, 
So here, for example, in the tensor product, it is equipped with the diagonal action of the Galois group. And if OE denotes the ring of integers, we can also consider a GK stable OE lattices inside V. And we will denote this by T. And these are those are free OE modules with the continuous section of GK. And we can also consider their quotients and etc. V over T. Mm. So we will also mean a Galois repeatic Galois representation by them. And we can also extend our uh, coefficient rings as well. And we can take uh, E algebras and we can tensor. Actually, by this property, we can do this. Um, so let me move forward with more interesting examples, which are characters. So characters are one dimensional representations. Um, and um, so let uh, Q, M, M, P to the infinity be the union of uh, these cyclotomic fields. So and this is called the cyclotomic uh, extension of Q. And let gamma be the Galois group of this. So there's a uh, gamma is isomorphic to ZP star. And it can be decomposed as uh, uh, follows where delta is isomorphic to z mod p, uh, p star, and the Galois group of uh, this. And gamma zero is the uh, other Galois group. So it's the subgroup, the subgroup. And this is isomorphic to z, zp. And piadic uh, cyclotomic character is defined by this property. And so, for every G in here. And if we can evaluate uh, at a P, P to the nth root of unity, and this is given by a power of a zeta, and this power is uh, called the periodic cyclotomic character evaluated at G. So this is the definition of periodic cyclotomic character, and this will be, uh, we will use this frequently. Mm, and by the above composition, this composition here, we can, and also decompose this um, as follows, where this part factors from gamma zero and this factors from delta. And, and uh, if we have a, a G representation and uh, we if we have a character, uh, then we will denote this representation by this. So this uh, is called V twisted by Psi. And it it will be the represent this representation where G X on V, but also it is multiplied by the uh, action of G in here. So, and in particular, the taste twist of V is defined the twist by the cyclotomic character. So, uh, we can attach to Galois L functions to Galois representations and Artinel functions. So on the analytic side. Uh, uh, for a compatible system of color representations, more technically term is motives. Uh, so of, um, we can attach an L function, uh, which can be given as a product of its Euler factor at each prime. And it is uh, basically uh, like defined, determined by the action of Frobenius element, a particular element from the Galois group uh, on V. And it is uh, the characteristic like P, Euler factor of P is defined by this characteristic polynomial of Frobenius. So L functions are complex meromorphic functions. And uh, on Euler, effect, we can also attach an Euler factor at infinity. And this is a product of certain gamma factors. And if we multiply this L function with the gamma factors, uh, then it satisfies conjecturally a functional equation which looks like this. So, mm, so it relates uh, the L function of V to L function of V star one, where here it's the uh, dual uh, of V um, twisted by one. Um, so simplest example is the Riemann zeta function and and uh, we also have Dirichlet L function similarly, uh, and it is um, 
it can be written as this uh, summation. And we can also um, give attach an L function to an elliptic curve. Uh, so the, the attach L function to the elliptic curve is up to finitely many factors, Euler factors. It is, uh, it is the same thing as uh, L function attached to the uh, Tate module of E. So there's a color representation uh, occurring from E, which, uh, uh, and uh, this L function is related to this L function uh, where these numbers are obtained like this. Um, and in Ivasova theory, we are interested in periodic analytic analog of those L functions uh, related to the certain values of L functions. So these are complex functions and uh, unfortunately not it's they are not uh, algebraic at every value. So but in order to interpolate them periodically we need algebraic values. So if we can obtain up to some certain periods, if we divide some certain periods, if we can obtain algebraic values, then we can interpolate them periodically and get an periodic analog of these L functions. So the idea of periodic L functions is this. And uh, we call these certain values as uh, critical L values. So we say S equals N is a critical. It's critical in the sense of the lean for V. If this product of gamma factors is holomorphic at S equals N, and uh, let me show you with the following Riemann zeta example. So these are the critical values. So negative odd integers and positive even integers. So as you can see here, a zeta N is a rational at each a negative odd integer. And uh, for even positive integers, if you divide by the powers of pi, uh, you will see that they are again uh, rational. So if you divide certain powers of pi. Mm. So mm, therefore we can uh, interpolate them uh, periodically. So conjecturally, there should be a periodic L, uh, L function, a periodic analytic function. So which is called periodic L function for V. Uh, which interpolates these values. So uh, what happens in the case of a, a Riemann zeta uh, is that it's the first example, kubato leopold periodic function. And uh, recall this character from the decomposition of the cyclotomic character, which factors from the finite quotient. So for every fixed J modulo P minus one, we, we have a periodic function. Um, for defined at uh, zp minus one, uh, such that uh, when we evaluated k negative odds, where k is congruent to j modulo p minus one, uh, the mm, the periodic uh, L function evaluated at k is equal to up to some factor, this factor, uh, times zeta k. Mm, so. Mm, we, we, we will need this factor in order to uh, interpolate uh, periodically. So uh, we will see an analog of this process in, in the future when we move on to modular forms. Uh, so on the, okay, this was the analytic side of the uh, picture. And on the algebraic side, we can associate to be some certain modules, some called cell mer groups and they are obtained by using their first global cohomologies. So just as an example, block kato cell groups looks like this. So these are the cohomology groups. Um, I'm, for the simplicity, I'm uh, looking at representations of uh, the global group of Q. Uh, and these things, these are, uh, these are for each prime L, we are choosing a subspace of H1 QLV. And these are these things are called local conditions. So these are the important. These are very important uh, in the definition of cell mer groups, especially the local conditions at P uh, will be very important for our discussions. Mm. And we have a famous conjecture, block cut conjecture, which is a generalization of the uh, Millennium Price BSD conjecture. For certain we we have this equality where this is the order of vanishing at S equals zero of the L function. 
And here we see that the dimension of the block got to Selma group minus the dimension of H0. And so it block got to conjecture relates to analytic side of the picture to the algebraic side. And so for example, we can, yeah. Um, for example, if we take V as the trivial representation, uh, V equals QP, for example, we get Dirichlet's unit theorem. Uh, so this will be the rank of the units. And um, so we get this result. Mm. So, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, when, sorry, when I can... V comes from an elliptic curve, uh, yes. when V comes from an elliptic curve representation, yes. for example, this formula uh, set uh, uh, down to the PSD conjecture. Yeah, yes, so if we thing. if we assume the uh, finiteness of the Tate Shapovalov group uh, under the assumption of Tate Shapovalov group is finite, then this is equivalent to saying that when we take V as the Tate module of the elliptic curve, then this equality becomes the BSD conjecture under the assumption of t finiteness of Tate Shapovalov group. Mm -hmm. uh, is this uh, what you asked? Yeah, yeah. The right hand okay. side, uh, the left hand side, but the right hand side is a little bit. Uh, Sorry. Uh, mm. The right hand side should be the algebraic rank of the elliptic. Yes, curve. this is the. I, uh, this is, this becomes zero, and this becomes the algebraic rank, uh, and uh, this becomes the. Uh, this becomes the analytic rank. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Thank you. Okay, and you're welcome. Um, so uh, let me continue with the Selmer groups and how it is related to Iwasawa main conjecture. So uh, similarly, Iwasawa theory also relates uh, the analytic side of the picture, uh, which will be periodical functions to the algebraic side of the picture, which are some Iwasawa theoretic Selmer groups. So uh, first of all, we have an Iwasawa, we, we define an Iwasawa algebra here. So there are generalizations I'm uh, writing in the simplest uh, case, case, but there are, uh, of course, they, they can be generalized. There are other uh, Iwasawa algebras that we will see, for example, later. So uh, it is the completed group ring of gamma. Um, and if we use the factorization of delta times gamma zero, and where gamma zero was isomorphic to uh, ZP. And we can uh, see this thing as like a power series with coefficients in ZP delta. And, and, and they are these, we have, we can all attach some Iwasawa theoretic Selmer groups to V uh, and they will be modules of this ring. Uh, and Iwasawa main conjecture simply uh, relates this uh, Selmer groups to periodical functions associated to V. Mm, and these are elements of uh, this Iwasawa algebra. And by the structure theorem of uh, lambda modules, we can associate a characteristic ideal if those modules, this uh, Iwasawa theoretic summer groups are finite generated and torsion. Then we, we have a definition of characteristic ideal. And in this case, mm, and uh, the conjecture states that the, uh, these groups are finite generated and torsion and their characteristic ideals are generated by the spherical functions. So the picture look like this. So we have Galois representations. We can obtain L functions on the analytic side and by periodical interpolation, we obtain periodical functions. On the algebraic side, we can attach by choosing the appropriate local conditions. We can attach Iwasawa theoretic Selma groups and Iwasawa main conjecture relates those two concepts. So that is the idea. Mm. So, for example, this uh, first case for Kubota-Leopold function is proved by Mazur and Wiles. Uh, so, let's move on to modular forms. Uh, let H denote the upper half plane, uh, and let gamma one and be this uh, group of matrices. Uh, where a and d is one modulo n and c is c is zero modulo n, 
And F is a modular form of weight K and level M. If F is holomorphic uh, and F satisfies this uh, equation, uh, symmetric equation, and if F satisfies some holomorphic Dirac condition that has cusps. And we do not this by uh, saying this. And if F vanishes at those cusps, then we say that F is a cusp form. Mm. So, and uh, which is denoted as this. Mm. So there's an eigenspace decomposition um, like this. So, mm, so we can uh, denote uh, decompose and uh, th this will be a uh, gamma when uh, anyway. So we can uh, decompose this by for each character factoring from here. Uh, and if F lies in one of those eigenspaces, we will denote this as this. So, and we will call this epsilon as neighbor type of F. So F has a Fourier expansion of this form uh, because it is one periodic in this case. And there are some certain Hecke operators that can go those spaces of modular forms and cusp forms. If F is a cusp form, which is eigenvector for all those Hecke operators, then it is called a cuspidal eigenform. And we will be interested in some special cuspidal eigenforms called new forms. For example, the famous uh, modularity theorem uh, says that uh, every elliptic curve is uh, modular, so like there's a new form of weight too, uh, which trivial in uh, even time as a, associated to elliptic curves over Q. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to main topic now. So um, this was the preliminary part, and so what is alpine formalism? Uh, so first of all, if we have a new form or an eigenform. And if we have a finite order digital character, so for each uh, new form like this, we can uh, associate, Deline associates a two dimensional representation, Vf, uh, with coefficients in E, a finite extension of QP, uh, such that uh, for certain uh, primes, the action of Frobenius elements uh, is given by the second polynomial. Uh, and uh, art and formalism dictates that uh, if we have two representations, then their di the L function associated to their direct sum factors as this. So it factors as the product of L function of V1 and L function of V2. Uh, and we have the decomposition of representations. Mm. So we have here, we have a two dimensional representation. So this tensor product is four dimensional representation. And it is decomposed as uh, uh, the symmetric tensors in this. So the subspace uh, generated by symmetric tensor. Um, it is G-stable uh, and it is three-dimensional. And there's a one-dimensional uh, sub, uh, subspace uh, generated by alternate, uh, uh, which consists of alternating tensors inside this. Mm. So our four-dimensional uh, representation decomposes as a three-dimensional symmetric square and one-dimensional alternating square. And it, art and formalism work for this representation uh, dictates that the L function associated to this uh, tensor product is factored as L function of symmetric square uh, twisted and L function of the alternating square. So. This is the L function of alternating squares to its by psi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can also define the representations uh, and the endomorphism of VF. So it is isomorphic to VF tensor VF star. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can uh, we have a trace map from these endomorphisms to E. And the kernel of this is uh, called at zero VF the adjoint representation. And then we have similarly, very similar to the previous uh, uh, factorization, uh, this representation, four-dimensional representation again, factors as three-dimensional representation and one-dimensional representation. And uh, this is the trivial representation. This is the 
and this is E, one dimensional E with the trivial action uh, of the Galois group. So uh, this factorization and the previous factorization actually essentially the same up to some certain twist. And so uh, if we twist by the alternating squares and characters, so we get the previous factorization basically. And, and hence uh, we can, uh, the L function of this uh, factorizes as such. And we want to see that if art informalism also holds for the periodic L functions of those representations. So, so in order, to, if we have critical uh, values for uh, all of them, like for this, for example, and uh, then we can uh, interpolate them periodically and then uh, this critical values be, will be also common for this and this. Uh, and uh, we can then interpolate and we can obtain the uh, art formalism, periodic uh, analog. However, uh, what if we don't have a critical values? First of all, we won't even know that if this will uh, have a, uh, we can attach a periodic function to this. It, uh, and it can be the case if the critical values for this uh, and this do not coincide. If this, in this case, uh, things get harder. And recall that S equals N was critical if that product was holomorphic as S equals N. So it is also saying equivalent to saying that S equals zero is critical for every twisted by nth power of the cyclotomic character. And we can formulate this criticality condition in terms of Hoch state weights uh, of V. Mm, and um, the Hoch state weights are the indices in the following Hoch state decomposition. So if we tensor V by CP, it, uh, if it is Hoch state, it decomposes like this. And those indices I are called Hoch state weights uh, and they are counted by multiplicities here, HI. So uh, this will be our Hoch state. Uh, for example, the Hoch state weight of the cyclotomic character will be one. Uh, for an uh, uh, for an example, or for a uh, Hoch state weight of an elliptic curve will be zero and one. So uh, there are other conventions, but this is the convention that uh, we use for the rest of the talk. And it turns out that S equals zero is critical for V, or we simply say that V is critical if the V plus V, which is the dimension of the uh, plus eigen space of V where uh, the elements in V fixed by complex conjugation, the action of complex conjugation is equal to the number of positive Hoch state weights. So um, counted by multiplicities, of course. Um, and this is uh, the equivalent condition of uh, critical values. So the ends which satisfies, which makes V critical will be our critical values. And in our setting, uh, let's look at the critical values. If F is a new form, again, uh, we compute the critical values for the adjoint representation as follows. So when this property holds, it is, as you can see, it is between um, minus one, minus K. In this case, our form is weight K plus two, by the way, uh, by our convention. And it is between this and zero. So it is non-negative in this case. If the sign of the um, psi is uh, equal to this, then we will have a positive uh, critical values. On the other hand, if you look at this psi, in this first case, we have positive ones. And in the second case, we have non-positive ones. So you see that, for example, this and this with the same under the same condition, they do not coincide. They don't. They don't. They have a trivial, a like empty intersection. And in this other condition, also this one and this one do not coincide because these are positives, but these are non-positive. So this means that actually this amounts to saying that their direct sum does not have any critical values. Uh, by direct computation, we could also see this, and. Uh, so that will be a problem because then if we don't have critical values for this, how will we even define the periodic L function for this? And Hida's uh, idea for this is as follows. 
So if we interpolate, like uh, we can put modular forms, some certain modular forms into periodic families uh, as well, and uh, they will interpolate modular forms at certain weights, and uh, we will we will obtain a get periodic. We will get a define a periodic L function uh, for uh, a three variable periodic L function uh, for two two variables for parametrizing f and g, the weights of f and weights of g. And the third one is for the cyclotomic deformation, which is parametrizing s. And one can set uh, these families as the same um, and specialize these at equal weights to obtain the periodic L functions attached to this uh, VF tensor VF. So, um, for example, we could and set these same things as family f and g as equal, but we could evaluate at different weights. And in this case, we might have a, we have actually some critical values, and that's how we obtain the periodic function. But on the other hand, uh, then we specialize this uh, periodic function for those families at equal weights for f and g and we get this uh, periodic function of this object. So, um, so let me introduce uh, how these periodic uh, families of modular forms occur. So what do I mean by this? So we need a concept called weight space for this. And the periodic weight space uh, over CP, let's say, is defined as the continuous group homomorphisms from ZP star to ZCP star. And this, from this, we can uh, obtain an um, like algebra homomorphisms uh, from the uh, Iwasawa algebra uh, a tensor one over p, and from to CP, and um, we can actually also um, by a rigid analytic uh, arguments we can obtain a geometric meaning of this. And it will be the union of p minus one open unit spores. So by open unit mole, I mean that uh, the uh, the numbers in CP in which are less than uh, one. So this weight space generalizes the integral weights because we can each see each weight k as this map sending z to z to k, and with this way, this periodic weight space. Sees, uh, includes these integers as elements of uh, the weight space. And there are also other weight space uh, for level different levels, uh, which are spaces of continuous characters like this. Um, so let me move on to uh, p ordinary forms. So this was the Hecke polynomial. Uh, and we can, uh, so there are two roots for this. And conjecturally, these roots are different. We know that they are different at weight two. And, and let's say alpha and beta are the roots of this polynomial. And we can pull, define the following piece stabilizations. So F zeta minus beta times F P zeta. Uh, this is, will be F alpha and we can similarly define F beta. So F alpha and F beta are called piece stabilizations and they are very similar to what we did in uh, Kubota Leopold fun uh, L function. So, if you recall that when we evaluated that k, there was an extra term. So, you can think like as this as a similar uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So, if APF is a uh, the Pitt and Fourier coefficient of F is a periodic unit, then uh, since um, alpha plus beta will be APF, one of, exactly one of them. Uh, should be a periodic unit because their product has valuation k plus one. So exactly one of them can be unit, periodic unit, that has valuation zero. Uh, and if not, then none of them is periodic units. If this is not a periodic unit, um, then um, we say that a p stabilized eigenform, f alpha is p ordinary, if alpha is a periodic unit, and p non ordinary if if this is not a periodic unit. Uh, so and let f alpha 
be the ordinary piece stabilization of f. Um, so roughly speaking, Hida families are the Fourier series of this form. And these are um, functions on the weight space, such that when we evaluate them, these are functions on the weight space, which includes integers as well. So when we evaluate them at k, these coefficients at k, we get another Fourier series, and this is equal to f alpha uh, a periodic modular form. So mm, this is the idea. Mm, if we start from an f alpha, a, a Hida family passing through f alpha will be a Fourier series like this, such that when we specialize at k, we get f alpha. Mm, and in this case, there exists a unique Hida family passing through f alpha. Mm. So let's move on to dust group dust factorization. The first result, like in this uh, problem, particular problem. Uh, so dust group established this uh, a periodic or atom formalism in the p ordinary case. So if we have a cuspidal eigen form and finite dish order dish the character, uh, then we have a factorization of periodic functions. So this is this is uh, the Periodic function of this, and here we have the periodic function of symmetric square and periodic function of alternating square. And for Hida families, actually, Das Gupta has a result for Hida families, and which looks like this. So this is a three variable periodic function. So this uh, this is for the weights of Vf, the first input. This is the weights for Vf, uh, and these are the uh, for the cyclotomic deformation. This is an extra term. Uh, but from this factorization, uh, evaluating at k and k in the same weights, and this result is obtained, basically. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to, okay, so this was uh, Das Gupta's factorization. We have a product of, uh, we can actually have a product of periodic functions. But uh, it was our main conjectures, and related these periodic functions to Selmer groups and their characteristic ideals, right? So if they were they, they are true, if these Ivasa main conjectures are true, then their Selmer groups should be factored as well, right? And in this case, uh, we we should obtain a decomposition of Selmer groups attached to this. So this is the Palanas work in the ordinary case. Mm, and let me show you simply uh, what the result is. So this is the Selmer group associated to edge-range representation, the three-dimensional uh, representation and uh, for a Hida family. And it is a torsion module, if and only if um, the Selmer group for four-dimensional uh, Selmer group is a torsion module. And in this case, we have the following equality in the divisor group. So these are the analogs of, like, these are the uh, generalization of characteristic ideals in this setting. Uh, the characteristic ideals uh, is, uh, can be factored as this. So um, they are con this result is consistent with das Gupta's factorization under the assumption of uh, Iwasa main conjectures. And uh, so the picture is so far like looks like this, and um, so we have um, we can obtain a Galois representation for EDF, which decomposes like this, and we have periodic functions. And in ordinary case, Das Gupta, we have Das Gupta's factorization of periodic functions, and in the also ordinary case for Selmer groups, we have Palmanas results. But what about the non-ordinary case? So this is the my topic. So for Coleman families. We have two piece stabilizations, uh, F alpha and F beta, in the non ordinary case. And in the non ordinary case, none of them are periodic units. So there's no Hida family passing through F alpha or F beta. But we can replace the role of the weight space by smaller disks inside, lying inside the weight space. And then uh, we can obtain Coleman families. So, um, so if we have an and we, we will call this ethanoid disks, nice ethanoid disks. Um, and this is the algebra associated to this ethanoid disk. Um, so 
such that these integer natural numbers are dense in U. And a Coleman family is a power series uh, where coefficients are in the string. So they are functions on U, the smaller neighborhood, such that when we evaluate them, we get uh, piece stabilized normalized eigenforms. And in this case, if we have a, a piece stabilized Hick eigenform with the theoretic relation of alpha is less than k plus one, this is this value is called slope. So if the slope is smaller than k plus one, then there exists a unique Coleman family uh, over some ethanoid neighborhood U uh, such that of k, such that when we specialize this Coleman family, when we evaluate this at k, we get a fact that our original uh, eigenform. And in the non-ordinary case, we have our Dandini and Loeffler's factorization results, uh, similar to Dasgupta's results. Uh, so these are Coleman families, and these are the weights for uh, these Coleman families. Uh, these are like uh, functions on U, and these are functions of weight space, which is denotes the cyclotomic formation again. And it factors as this. So we have the factorization of periodical functions again here. And in my case, uh, um, I, what I proved is that I obtained the algebraic analog of this. But in this case, we couldn't use uh, Selmer groups uh, because we couldn't choose, uh, like, it is impossible to choose local conditions directly like this. So we need to move into the uh, another world uh, of Pierre de Koch theory. And we have a different uh, a generalization of Selmer groups, which are called Selmer complexes. So these are uh, certain complexes in certain divide, derived categories. And um, so they are Cauchy complexes. Um, where their first and second cohomology groups uh, generalize the Selmer group. And they are first introduced by Nekovar and then generalized by Potars and Benoit to work with local conditions from uh, coming from phi gamma modules, which, is a cons uh, which are uh, uh, integral to PhD coach theory, uh, and coefficients in alphanoid algebra, which were like the rings of uh, these smaller disks lying in weak space. And we will denote our Vasova theoretic Selmer complexes uh, by this Argame Vasova VD, where V is our representation. And D is the local condition at P uh, associated to V, obtained from uh, some phi, phi gamma modules. And we will denote these cohomologies by HI Vasova. And let me simply uh, go over my main theorem. So we have a P non ordinary normalized name form uh, with weight k plus two, level n character epsilon, and we have a non-trivial finite order vegetative character. So let h denote the space of locally analytic distributions on the open unit. This, this is another problem in the non-ordinary case because our, uh, so, um, our periodical functions won't be integral. So we will have divisors and uh, some uh, like uh, denominators. And so this, for this reason, we will need to look at a larger uh, space, larger uh, larger ring. So this is the space of local uh, ring of locally analytic distributions on the open unit disk. And for an affinoid algebra, so this is called the large Uvasov algebra, basically. And for an affinoid algebra A over E, uh, we have a like a direct category of perfect complexes. Basically, perfect complexes are complexes which can be represented by, by a complex of finitely generated projective modules, and they are concentrated and degrees these. Uh, so, uh, for a Coleman family passing through F, a P stabilization of F, let VF denote the rank 2 Galois representation attached to the Coleman family, and uh, this is the ring of the Coleman family. Mm. And we have our representation. This is the four, rank four one. This is the rank three, and this is the rank one uh, representation. And we can attach uh, some local conditions at P, uh, which is necessary to define the Selmer complexes. And my theorem is this. Under some mild technical conditions, uh, there is a sufficiently small ethanoid neighborhood inside the weight space, uh, with the, ring of, uh, the algebra 
as A, and unique Coleman family F, and passing through a PS stabilization of F, such that the following factorization holds. So in this case, we have determinants of these complexes, and these complexes lie in uh, perfect uh, complexes concentrated at degrees one and two. Uh, so they can be represented by uh, complexes from a, a like projective module to another projective module, finitely generated. Uh, and the determinants means that determinants of this map. Uh, so determinants, these are these will gener uh, generalize the characteristic ideals and the characteristic ideals factor like this. So this picture is like this. I will finish in a few minutes um, if we have time. Like uh, I will uh, collect it and uh, complete it now. Yes. So this is the picture. But we have one more case that we didn't investigate because we when the when the AP was unit, we had ordinary stabilization, but we also had another stabilization, peace stabilization, which was uh, whose get equation was k plus one. So we didn't investigate this case, and it is kind of an important case which is unsolved. So it is called critical slope case. So we say that f alpha is critical slope if this valuation is k plus one. This only happens when AP is a unit. And theta critical if F alpha is the image of the theta operator, these are uh, some spaces of overconvergent modular forms. And critical if we have decomposes in the direct sum of two characters. So these are two characters. So this was two dimensional. So if this decomposes as direct sum of two characters, as a, when the Galois action is restricted to Galois uh, of Galois group of QP, if this decomposes, as this direct sum, then we say critical. Uh, and so we have these implications, critical implies the critical implies critical slope. In the Eisenstein's case, these are the same thing. And in the I cusp form case, these are the same thing. So, and in the future, I will be interested in this case. Uh, and in this case, uh, the choice of local conditions gets uh, a bit tricky uh, for some technical reasons. And this is one of the reasons, for example, we have a, a rigid analytic space of dimension, echo dimension one called eigencurve, parameterizing eigenforms in a periodic way. And each point corresponds to a, mod, a periodic form, basically. And we have a weight morphism uh, from this eigencurve to the weight space. And the points which in eigencurve, which corresponds to the theta critical uh, forms, corresponds to the points where this map is ramified. So that's the key thing. And for future work, we will use this description and uh, we hope to uh, construct these appropriate periodical functions and Salmer complexes, and hopefully obtain the uh, corresponding factorization results. Uh, thank you very much for listening.